Hello. Hopefully you can hear us and we've got you all joining us. Um, my goat plans have been mildly... Hi Joyce. What are you doing Joyce? Our goat plans for today have been mildly thwarted um, because my treat snack, uh, my treat stash that I had uh, set up for our friends uh, across the fence to slowly lure our, uh, our goat buddies over. Um, it was stolen, so we're actually gonna turn the camera this way. And uh, we are looking at a bunch of goats who raided the treats that I had brought over. Um, very, very naughty. Just altogether terrible. No. They're enjoying themselves though. So welcome everybody. Um, if you are seeing this move around, it is because uh, we've got my buddy Ferguson hanging out down here. And uh, let's see if we can see him. Oh, he's going to be shy. Yep, nope. Ferguson has also thwarted me, but uh, we're going to just kind of chill out here, wait for our goat friends to come and say hello, and... Uh, see where it takes us today. We're supposed to be visiting with Nelly, um, who is a um, very, very sweet and uh, spunky little goat uh, who's not out here at the moment. So I don't know where she's hanging out in her yard. Um, hopefully she'll come and say hello to us in a second. Oh, oh, okay. This is a, uh, a classic uh, a goat uh, live stream dilemma. They are going to chew on our equipment all afternoon. Um, how is everybody doing today, by the way? And uh, <laughs> we've got, um, oh, Leia. <laughs> we've got Leia causing some trouble behind me. Um, maybe Joyce will come over here in a second. Let's see if we can. Ooh. Say hello to my friend Joyce. Joyce! What do you think? You want to come over here? She does not. Okay. Okay, so we've got tons of goat cooperation today. Right, Poppy? Thank you. You look great. You're very aesthetically pleasing. You keep her, she, uh, she's got a wonderful facial hair regimen, uh, keeps her beard in tip-top shape. Um, and we are also, by the way, we are marking our last Virtual Sanctuary live stream before the start of our official, like, Goat Games start date. Um, so we have been, hi Kathy, <laughs> um, we have been, uh, excitedly preparing for our Goat Games opening ceremony on Saturday, this Saturday. So I know we've been uh, chatting a lot about all of our... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Leia. <laughs> we've been chatting a lot about all of our updates, our fundraising updates, um, and that is actually why we are in with these goats right now. So for those of you who may just be tuning in, um, Leia is entirely knocking over our tripod. Leia. Um, <laughs> we'll focus over here on uh, Leia's daughter, Libby. Libby, what do you think? Um, Libby doesn't want to cooperate either. We're going to get some Libby butt time in, I guess. And some Lillian time. Hi, Lillian. Um, so for those of you who are just tuning in um, and maybe haven't heard about the goat games before, uh, they are our, uh, our summer fundraiser. So we've definitely, um, like so many nonprofits um, and organizations across the board, um, you know, seen some changes with uh, everything happening in 2020 um, and specifically with the global pandemic um, and so we've lost a lot of our you know traditional um, income streams where we would love to be uh, you know having folks here in person for tours and visits um, and so in order to keep you all engaged uh, we have our goat games going on uh, where you can sign up 
to join one of our GOAT teams and, uh, and get active, uh, get engaged with the sanctuary, and help us raise some money to take care of all of these guys. So our goal, um, our goal for the GOAT games is to, by the end of the GOAT games, uh, August 16th, by that time, um, raise a little over 46000 back this direction and adjust this for a second um, we are so so grateful to everybody who has supported us um, so far and signed up for one of our goat teams uh, yes I, I the Wi-Fi decided it didn't like that spot so we've moved over here hopefully it's working again hopefully this will this will be enough um, and then hopefully our, our uh, special team, Nelly, will actually um, have the mascot uh, up here. Because Nelly is still, I don't know, somewhere piecing off, uh, piecing out, like, out back. Um, I still haven't spotted her since being in here. All of her friends, all of her friends are <laughs> out front. Um, and Nelly is just kind of hiding out back. But Nelly is our our wonderful biking team so if you want to sign up and bike 5k or a distance of your choosing uh it could be you know on a nature trail on like a standard you know two-wheel bike it could be tricycling like our uh lovely animal care director kelly mullins is doing um, and if you did not see last week's virtual sanctuary where um uh we had uh danny Aretto stealing Kelly Mullins's bike or tricycle um, and then uh, falling off of it. You should go back and uh, check a few of our other uh, virtual sanctuaries out and uh, catch some good footage. Yes, motorcycling. I think you could count that as uh, biking as well. Uh, Nelly's team just needs some love. Do some bicycle crunches. Do a stationary bike. Uh, you know, one of those little finger bikes. I don't know if anybody else... Uh, was a kid in the early 2000s when those little like uh, finger skateboards and bikes were around. But uh, <laughs> uh, you can get creative with how your bicycling looks um, and uh, join Team Nelly. Um, spin classes for sure. Yes, Heather. Um, Sherry, are you on Team Nelly by the way? Um, I see, I definitely see a few people in our comments who are participating. Um, if you are, um, if you're already, uh, signed up to be a part of the GOAT games, uh, you know, add your team, say who you're, who you're, uh, who you're helping out in our comments. And then, um, <laughs> and then if you haven't signed up for GOAT games and you want to get involved and join the fun. Um, you could text Goat Games, uh, one word, Goat Games, to 71777 and sign up that way. Um, and uh, a kid in the early 2000s, yes, I am uh, 25, so I was very young in the early 2000s. <laughs> But, uh, okay, yes. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of an update about where we're at. I can't remember numbers super well off the bat, which is why I like to do storytelling here for uh, all of our visitors instead, because I get it, numbers just don't stick. So when we talk about like numbers of animals in agriculture and things like that, um, we like to weave it into some stories instead. So, but for our updates, we have in the lead, by the way, Team Alice who has um, raised a uh, little over $6,000 uh, so far. Uh, she had been in the, she'd kind of been lagging behind as our, uh, uh, at the Tuesday Virtual Sanctuary. So whoever signed up to do some running for Team Alice uh, in the last couple of days, thank you so much. We're super appreciative. Look at that little tulip butt. That's a good little tool about walking away. I'm still hoping that Nellie is going to make her way over here. But we're going to get some, uh... Poppy! Look! Let's see. Poppy, look! Who has paper? Um, so they may have eaten all of the treats, but, uh, I've got, uh, the ever so, um... <laughs> the ever so enticing, 
uh, non, non goat approved paper. Um, so we've also got Bartleby, my team. I'm doing 1400 push ups over the course of about a week for team Bartleby. We'll see how that goes. I may, uh, I, uh, I may end up doing some uh, cheating push-ups by the end of that, but uh, uh, he has raised over $3,000 so far. Team Chester has raised $1,200. He's swimming. Uh, Violet, you can walk or hike with Team Violet, and uh, we've raised uh, $4,800 for Team Violet so far. And then Nelly, Team Nelly has raised $4,600. I'm going to have to have a talk with Nelly about appearing for... Uh, uh, <laughs> for her spotlight, um, since she's probably just not feeling super camera ready at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> those are our updates so far. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't, uh, kind of figured out your, uh, Goat Games, uh, you know, nourishment plan. We've got some awesome recipes up on at Ad Love Stir so far, coming from our Compassionate Cuisine Cook, uh, kitchen. So you can do some protein-packed, plant-based meals um, that uh, are very much Poppy-approved. Poppy, do you like all of the food that you've tried to steal from us so far? She's a little shy at the moment, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Nellie Nelly did not uh, did not decide to uh, check her calendar this morning. Um, I told her she was going to be on, but she has decided that she's got other big plans. Um, what are you doing, Poppy? Come here. Um, we also had a very exciting week, so the treats that I was going to be giving these guys until they stole them before we logged on um, were going to be willow leaves. And... Uh, they have a lot of willow leaves because our recent storm, the recent tropical storm, brought down some tree branches. And I got a message from uh, one of our wonderful uh, staff members, Lauren Barberi, who you see here on Virtual Sanctuary all the time, saying, Caden, how many, uh, how much do you think goats hate rain? And the answer is they pretty much hate rain more than any other animal here at the sanctuary. And how many willow leaves, their very favorite treat, does it take for goats to go out in the rain? Um, so if you have any guesses about how many willow leaves it takes to get a whole herd of goats out in the rain to eat their favorite snack, um, leave that below. And uh, we might, because Nelly has fully skipped out on her press conference, walk up front to the, the front of the sanctuary and say hello to some of our other representatives for the goat games. Because uh, I, I just don't know where Nelly has decided to go. Um, so thank you for uh, putting up with us. Um, we're going to scoot out this way, and if you have any questions about Nelly or any of the other goats in this field, um, leave them in the comments and I will ask away. I'm doing our virtual sanctuary solo today. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, so I don't have Lauren's help with the camera, so we're going to just do a little walk and tour this way. Janine, a whole tree. That is a very good guess. Sherry, one leaf will not cut it. Um, one leaf of uh, willow leaves... Ooh, uh, you can decide the unit that you're guessing in, but I'm, I'm going to say that you're going to probably want to talk about full branches. Yeah. One tree would definitely do the trick, Janine. One leaf is not enough to uh, entice them for a hoof trim. Um, so they've got, they've got some standards. Goats don't just actually eat everything. Um, you know, they've got their idea of uh, what might not be acceptable. Oop, actually, hold on real quick gonna come over here and spray my feet because we're hanging out with our CLs um, so the answer is about 25% of a willow tree did the trick this time um, we definitely had quite a few branches come down and uh, Lauren sent over a really cute photo of uh, Chester out in the rain um, enjoying his willow leaves uh, which was appropriate because Chester is team swimming for the goat games. But uh, yeah, they've been they've been munching on their snacks for the past couple of days now. So we are headed over to see a few more of our representatives, and uh, we'll see who else we spot along the well. <laughs> we got some lovely banter in the comments there. Um, so I think I also spot. Sister Mary Frances, our lovely little potbelly pig, 
hanging out in the sheep field at the moment. <laughs> if anybody has any questions about the goats or any other of our uh, rescued animals here, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'm happy to answer away. <laughs> We're gonna stop and say hello to Sister Mary Frances uh, for a second here. She is right over here. Sister Mary. Let's see. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh. Do you guys all still have us here? Sister Mary might have cut out for a second, but we should be okay. Hi, Cranky Pants. <laughs> um, Jasmine is doing well. Um, she is just in a field where the Wi-Fi is not super reliable, but she's doing very well, um, thankfully. Here. Um, she is such a, such a friendly pig. Okay, I'm glad that we're still, uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we're still together. Um, I wasn't sure if it had cut out at all. But, uh, <laughs> Sister Mary is very happily munching on her grass, uh, which is growing nicely thanks to the rain that we recently got. Do you want a belly rub today, Mary Frances? What's the verdict? Is it nice enough? Um, they definitely were very, very toasty um, on some of the hotter days earlier last week. Um, and they are much more content for some more moderate summer weather right now. Um, they are not big fans of the heat, especially, um, especially a lot of our bigger birds who are kind of bred to grow so big that it's harder for them to cool off. Um, our pigs, they make do because they happily dunk themselves into their mud wallows, their, uh, yeah, we've got a good little Sister Mary tail going on there. Um, they'll dunk themselves into their kiddie pools um, and just generally stay pretty cool. Um, and then we have a few of our sheep who really, really, really hate the hot weather. Um, Shirley in particular, anybody who's ever been here and seen a sheep who looked like she was a stuffed animal. Sister Mary is wandering off. Um, that was Shirley the sheep. And Shirley, uh, Shirley has a real hard time in the heat because of, um, you know, her wool being so, uh, so much, providing so much more body coverage than a lot of our other sheep's wool does. Um, and she also has, you know, just some other health stuff going on that cause her to be a little bit warmer. So she pops into an air-conditioned stall in the heat. Um, and we are gonna stop and say hello to, actually I think we're gonna go and say hello to a few of our buns. Um, I'm looking and seeing who's out and about uh, since Nellie decided to not cooperate. Uh, we'll just do this on the fly, right? <laughs> um, We're going to go say hello to uh, two cute bunnies who are outside right now because it is cool enough for them to be out. Rabbits can become um, very, very sensitive to the heat, so they actually have to go indoors if it's too hot out, um, which is an important thing to note because, um, because a lot of rabbits, a lot of companion rabbits are kept in um, entirely outdoor enclosures and might not get the sort of weatherproofing that they need. So while our bunnies definitely do enjoy having some outside space to play and hang out in um, and lots of grass to munch on, um, these guys also still need us to keep a good indoor environment that they can go to if it's too cold out or too hot outside. Yes, who is actually greeting us in the background? I think it's Max who's talking right now. So he is um, the new rooster buddy of our newest rescue, Petunia June, um, who we had featured last week as well. So Max is talking away. Uh, would you like to come and say hello, Bobby? What do you think? 
Would you like to say hello? see if we can get Bobby to say hello to us here. Hey buddies. All right. So we've got uh, Bobby and Christian hanging out in the shade for a, a toasty summer day and uh, <laughs> they're very comfortable. So I'm just going to move this out of the way, guys, so that we can... I know it was a nice little uh, coverage for you. You got some more privacy. But they have dug themselves... I don't know if you can see. Um, they have fully dug themselves up some nice fresh dirt. Uh, they're happily destroying the earth in here and kind of tearing it up. Um, in fact, Bobby was last... Uh, Last month, he was on a mission to dig to China, so we just had to keep filling <laughs> filling his hole back up. But um, they'll dig it up so it's nice and cool um, in the dirt, and then they'll hang out on the cool dirt. It helps them stay nice and uh, it helps them stay nice and cool, and they're in their shade. Um, and these guys are super friendly little dogs, right? Oh, are you feeling shy? Bobby is definitely... This guy up front, he's definitely much more outgoing than his buddy Christian, who's just popped himself kind of right behind the leaves, um, and <laughs> is playing, is playing extra shy at the moment, um, because, yeah, Christian's just, you know, they're, they're brothers, we believe, um, but, uh, they've got their own unique individual personalities. Isn't that right, Bobby? Mm. But we're gonna munch on the leaves. Um, we don't typically rescue rabbits here, um, as like an active, uh, species that we're looking to take care of, uh, but these guys were unfortunately left on our driveway, and, uh, they were left in a paper bag in January of 2019, uh, just out at the top of our driveway, and if you've ever visited here, we've got a long hill a long driveway to get to the base of the hill where the majority of our staff look at him he's cleaning oh so cute um so they uh they were around where we wouldn't have necessarily seen them we were very fortunate that we found them before they hopped out chewed through the bag knocked it over um and uh and that we were able to bring them to safety um what do the bunnies eat so a rabbit's diet should be primarily hay and grass um, so they get, uh, they get hay and they have lots of fresh grass in here as well. Um, and then you can feed them a little bit of, um, leafy greens, lower calcium leafy greens. So, um, one of the things that actually, interestingly enough, um, a lot of people very, are very worried when they go on to a, a vegan diet that they're not going to get enough calcium because we're told we have to get calcium from cow's milk. Um, but there are actually a ton of... Uh, leafy green vegetables that are very high in calcium. Rabbits are just really good at sucking calcium out of their food, um, so you don't want to give them too many high calcium uh, veggies. But they can eat some lettuce and um, the occasional, occasional little bit of fruit. Um, but you don't want to give them anything too high in sugar either. So mostly grass and hay, and then uh, and then they find some extra nibblings in here, like they were munching on on the leaves a little bit um, and uh, digging. Digging down further. You gonna get a better spot there, Bob? And then, does anyone else know what uh, perhaps not so delicious sounding uh, thing that rabbits also need to eat on a regular basis? And I'll give you a hint. Technically speaking, it is an animal product. Uh, so these little herbivores eat an animal product, but I think it's vegan. Uh, uh, the carrots are a myth. Yeah, Bugs Bunny did a number on... Uh, people's conception of what rabbits should eat. They really shouldn't eat too many carrots, Janine. Um, it's uh, way too high in sugar because root veggies, uh, root veggies have quite a bit of sugar, much healthier sugar than eating like processed sugar. It's good for you to eat lots of veggies um, and root veggies, but uh, for rabbits, their bodies just don't process sugar the way that um, our bodies do. And so you, you want to keep those to a minimum. Lots and lots of hay. Ah, uh, Veronica knows and gave a little poop emoji. Yes, specifically their seagulls. So they've got a special kind of poop that if they want to be able to get the most out of their digestion, um, 
that they uh, they really need to be eating their their one type of poop that's like extra smelly and extra dark, um, and then they'll they'll redigest some of the stuff that passed through the first time, uh, and really you know get the most uh, <laughs> most fiber for their their munching. Right, Bobby? He's like, I know you're talking about me pooping, and I'm not even ashamed at all. We shouldn't be, right, Bobby? Everybody poops. Um, how are we doing on time here? So I know that we've got um, just a couple minutes left for today, but if anybody has any question about questions about our bunnies, about the goat games, about everything that we're doing here, ask away. Right, Bobby? What do you think? You want to do fist bump? And uh, the only kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, Veronica, hard not to hit a buzzer when the answer is poop. <laughs> um, <laughs> these guys have been uh, very, very thrilled today. They got to go on a little adventure while I was cleaning their house this morning um, and decided to hop over and say hello to a bunch of chickens while I uh, raced after them. Oh no, Janine. <laughs> Dogs eating cat poop is a whole a whole other uh, category of uh, <laughs> of something to contend with. Um, although I'm sure that uh, Bobby and Christian kind of share each other's uh, byproducts, if you will. What do you think? Come on, Bobby. These guys are feeling a little bit shy today, I think. Um, but uh, Christian is happily in a field of clover at the moment. Um, I might go scoop him to get him to say hello. Uh, well, we'll see about that. Um, our rabbit friends, our rabbit friends are usually thought of as a, um, they're usually thought of as a companion animal species by a lot of folks who visit here. Although, of course, we know that um, Leslie the rooster talking is Max, I believe, uh, who we met with Petunia June. Um, we, we know that a lot of our uh, rabbit friends are actually raised on farms and live markets. Um, you know, you name it. They're definitely also a farmed animal. And they have something in common. Uh, we talk about this sometimes. They have something in common with our chicken friends, our turkey friends, our ducks and geese as well. Um, if you had to guess what unites all of these guys in terms of animal agriculture, um, leave a guess below. <laughs> um, and then I'll answer that in a second. Um, and again, if you have um, any questions about our goat games, we are going to be focusing all next week on, um, on goat games with the sanctuary and, uh, and our staff are participating as well, uh, so you could check out, see what sort of fun activities our staff are doing to uh, to be a part of the fun. And uh, we hope to see you all joining. Um, and uh, you can uh, check our our goat game stuff out on our website, casanctuary.org. Um, and I haven't seen any guesses in here about what unites our bunny and our our bird friends. Um, other than a great, a great love of keeping themselves nice and clean. Oh, Christian is making another appearance. Hi, buddy. What do you think? He's a little shy, but he's still willing to say hello. Um, so <laughs> these guys, unfortunately, the common denominator is that they are small animals and, um, they're very, very quick to grow. Uh, so they're... As a whole, our birds and our rabbits make up the most number of farmed animals who are raised, and they have the most varied conditions that they're raised in. So frequently, for animal agriculture to make a profit in the United States, these species, the ones who make up over 95% of the animals who are on farms, or of the land animals who are on farms, because we also shouldn't forget that there are trillions of farmed fishes, but they are, um, they are unfortunately exempt from a lot of the laws that are written to protect the welfare of farmed animals. So you'll have laws written and put in place, um, 
in order to... I see your comment, Janine. I'm going to answer that in a hot second. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're allowed to be raised in much, uh, much more varied conditions, and they're allowed to be killed in just about any way as long as the intention is for them to be being farmed for profit. So unfortunately, these guys don't get the protection that they deserve, or the protection that a lot of us who think of them first and foremost as companion animals um, might be terrified to, to, to think of them enduring um, on farms. Look at Bobby in the background. Look at that little cleaning dude. It's very important after taking a dust bath to then give yourself a bath bath. Janine, I don't think that they would love if I hopped into their water bowl and all, stole all of their hot water, or their cold water on a hot day. Um, so I'm not going to hop in there. Um, the kiddie pool was already a little bit small for me, but if anybody wants to see me in Bruce's uh, kiddie pool, you can check out one of our older Virtual Sanctuary videos as well. <gasps> and uh, rabbits, in case, and shame on me for not, uh, shame on me for not saying this earlier, rabbits are incredibly emotional, moody. Uh, they give pigs a run for their money, honestly, but deeply, deeply emotional and social animals. Um, so while they can be territorial, for sure, and you have to bond rabbits carefully, um, it, it, they really thrive on having companions, and they have very, very close relationships with one another. Um, and Christian and Bobby, having been together, we presume their entire lives, they came here bonded. Um, they were left here bonded. We don't recommend you leave them, but, like, they... Uh, <laughs> They are, they are such good brothers, and they really do groom each other, look after one another, and snuggle all of the time. Um, I can't get enough of these guys. So, on that adorable note um, of rabbits being perfect, moody, emotional creatures uh, who have the same sort of great relationships that uh, uh, all of these other species who we love and care for, like cats and dogs, are capable of, um, I am going to sign out for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We really appreciate you just continuing to check in with us here at the sanctuary, to uh, share us with your friends and family, to support us through Goat Games. Um, check out at Ad Love Stir on Instagram if you haven't already. And uh, we hope to have you tuning in on Saturday. I actually am not sure what time, so we're going to get that information out, or we might already have it in the comments. But uh, we've got our opening ceremonies on Saturday for the GOAT Games. Um, and if you uh, can't catch us then, uh, we'll be back next week on Tuesday with all sorts of updates. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Stay healthy and uh, enjoy the beautiful weather. I know, I'm trying to rest my arms, Sherry. <laughs> they are going to be tired from all those push-ups. All right, bye everyone.